Welcome to our review on concrete. First thing we need to think about then is a type of reaction called thermal decomposition. So what we actually find is that a thermal decomposition reaction is when one substance is broken down into two or more products by heating. So that can be a nice simple two mark question for you. They could ask you what is thermal decomposition and as long as you say one substance is broken down, that's worth one mark to us, and the second mark would be for saying by heating. Now, if we think about some examples of rocks we've already discussed in this unit, then we've got limestone and marble. Now, both of them are forms of calcium carbonate, CaCO3. Now, when we heat that calcium carbonate strongly, it breaks down to make calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So what we find is that that one is quite easy to break down with a Bunsen burner in the lab, but carbonates of very reactive metals need higher temperatures than the Bunsen burner. So we won't be able to break down all carbonates using a Bunsen burner. Some of them will need much higher temperatures. So once we've generated this calcium oxide by heating our limestone or our marble, then we can actually react the calcium oxide with water to make calcium hydroxide. So I've given you the word and symbol equations there. So calcium oxide plus water makes calcium hydroxide. Now, calcium hydroxide is an alkali, which means that we can use it to neutralize acids. So for example, if we've got fields or lakes that are affected by acidic conditions, whether that's down to acid rain or other things, then we can spread our calcium hydroxide across them and that will neutralize the acids. We've also got another use in the school lab, which is as lime water. So lime water quite simply is a solution of calcium hydroxide and we use lime water to test for carbon dioxide and make sure you remember this test, okay? So lime water goes from colorless to cloudy when carbon dioxide is present and make sure we use that word colorless. Don't use any other terms like clear or transparent or anything like this because they won't get you the mark. Make sure we say colorless. Now, once we've got our calcium carbonate, we can do a huge range of things with it. So we can carry out that thermal decomposition, as we've discussed, to make calcium oxide. And if we add water to calcium oxide, we make calcium hydroxide, which obviously we can use in lime water and so forth. If we go back to our calcium carbonate once more and we heat it up with clay, then we're going to generate cement. Now, that cement we can use for a couple of things. If we add sand and water to the cement, we make this stuff called mortar. Now, mortar is what we're going to use to set bricks together when we're doing any form of building of houses, etc. And the reason that it can be used to do that is because as the mortar sets, it absorbs carbon dioxide from the air, forming calcium carbonate crystals, which then lock together the other ingredients and hold it strong. If we take our cement, add stuff called aggregate, which is the sort of ground up bits of stone, basically, sand and water to it, then we make concrete. And concrete, obviously, we use again in construction, whether it's for actual sort of groundwork and so forth. So we've got a variety of different things that we can do with calcium carbonate, just depending on what we add to it. One thing we can do to make concrete more useful to us is to actually create this stuff called reinforced concrete. Now that's what's known as a composite material. And the reason it's a composite material is because it actually takes properties from the two different materials it's made from. So what we find is the concrete has been strengthened by letting it set around this supporting mesh of solid steel. And if ever you've looked at construction sites, you may have seen this kind of grid of metal going in and then they pour the concrete over it. That's the reinforced concrete that they're making there. So this composite material has useful properties from both materials it contains. So if we think about concrete, that's hard and strong in compression, so when you're pushing down on it basically. And steel, which is the bit we're going to be adding in that meshwork, is flexible and strong in tension, so when you're pulling on the ends. So our composite material then has those properties of being hard, strong in compression, flexible and strong in tension. It makes it a better material overall. 